Okay, so fix me. Um, documenting the uneven distribution of OpenStreetMap data quality issues. You know, people hear data quality and blank out, so hopefully it will work better. I will start first by introducing the broader project in which this, this piece of work came from. So these are beautiful planet, and we map it, and we have a lot of data about it, but unfortunately, a horrible disease has taken over. Um, we have our data are dirty, right, uh, and diseased. And so we have come with the concept of self-healing maps as a research project that we've been pursuing now for three years, and we keep on going. And the idea is that, well, we lack mechanisms enabling responsive and hopefully autonomous updates of map data. Currently takes a lot of time to take your data from the measurements to something that's usable in a spatial data set. Um, and that's the same for OpenStreetMap, it's the same for uh, authoritative data, um, the likes of here and Telenav and others know that as well. You know, it takes at least three, four, five weeks at best to, to get your data to a production ready state. And we are interested in narrowing this time and understanding where we can help with some sort of autonomous uh, possible machine learning approaches. So there are a few issues why approaches developed in all those years until now are no longer suitable. First of all, uh, traditionally data were collected in a very local context. You collected data for a certain country or county even, uh, but not in a global context as we have now. And if you collect data globally like we do with OpenStreetMap, the problem is that the things on the ground change. So you can't apply the same kind of rules or quality standards everywhere, right? That's really also not suitable for, for real-time updates or close to real-time updates. Um, and if you don't have a well-defined information product, such as OpenStreetMap is not you know, constrained by hard-wired rules, but we are free to, to map as is appropriate for a given locality, um, then it becomes really difficult to, to end up with something that's uh, broadly usable. I don't know what's happening with the screen. Oh, good. Um, so how can we go about this? So what we are using in this project is a metaphor of the human immune system, or an animal immune system, if you want, right? So if you think of yourself, um, you're born, little baby, and you already have a defense mechanism. Actually, one that you see straight away, your skin is the first barrier that separates what is inside you and what's supposed to be protected from the external world. Um, that's the most visible part of the innate uh, immune system. And then we have other mechanisms that can deal with things that come into the body and are foreign bodies, right? And that's somewhat similar to what we know of in the database world. You build a schema, you design your database, you build a schema and you expect a double, someone gives you a string, you say go away. Okay? Um, that's the skin. And then you might have some business rules and triggers and whatever mechanisms that you design for the database and that apply to the whole thing or nothing, right? So as, as a new piece of data is loaded, that piece of data is analyzed and either rejected or accepted and applies to the whole database. All right. Now, not very good, right? You might have your expert who takes a book and transcribes the quality conditions that you want to apply and implement it in Python script. That expert leaves, someone else comes, can't quite understand the script, re-implements the whole thing again. Uh, in OpenStreetMap, um, the rules are rather vague. So if someone implements it, they bring in a lot of local or their own expert knowledge that might not be the same uh, in all of the different OpenStreetMap quality assurance tools. And we have done actually a piece of work where we compare these things. So not very good. So what we're interested in this project is really this column here uh, on the right, where in a human body, we have an acquired immune system. Okay, you get a flu once this season, you will not get it a second time because your immune system has learned from things that have taken it off kilter, right, so to say. Similarly, are there things that will break the consistency and the integrity of our database from which we can learn and prevent this from happening in the future. So we need some model of outliers, we need some model of 
what it means to be not compatible with the rest of the content, and we want to learn methods to heal this. Okay, so that's our main research project. Um, tackling this is a rather big piece of cake. So we've split this in a, in a few projects. Uh, broadly speaking, into the ability to detect anomalies and outliers. And you will have a talk later on uh, from Ivan, sitting here, uh, who will talk about his part of, of his research, where we has, he has looked at, at outlier detection. Um, and we have another piece of, or component of this work by Rajesh, and I'll be presenting a bit of it here, who is looking at healing the errors. Now, that's not what I'm going to talk about today. I'm going to talk about his first work package, which was understanding where, broadly, people experience problems in OpenStreetMap, because that helped us to focus. So, dirty data, right? These are the tools we use in OpenStreetMap, uh, Osmos, uh, FixRide. Um, they all check different conditions. OpenStreetMap, quite obviously, is a valuable data set, but we want to understand where people experience problems and how those problems are maybe unevenly distributed around the world, right? So those data are they useful. Okay, so understanding the types of map errors helps us to devise mechanisms. Uh, it is a first step, um, but how do we go about that? And so we found out, oh, there is an intrinsic way of doing this. There is something that users tell us, right? It's a, it's a valuable piece of information we can use. And that's something known as fix me. And it's one of the tags that mappers can associate with a with the mapped feature, with a node or a way, and say, oh, there's some problem with this. Okay? And if we can understand the text that they express, we might be able to apply appropriate tools to handle it. So this is how a fix me looks. It's a very short text. It's shorter than a tweet. Uh, so there is something, this is uh, from Switzerland, because a part of our uh, research was done on Switzerland. Position should be checked. Well, that's really good. Uh, these kind of texts happen all throughout the data set, and uh, we're trying to somehow categorize them in this piece of work. So as of November 2019, there was 1.7 million features tagged this way. Fix me's are, just as a side note, quite different to the notes that people can place on OSM. Notes are not associated with a feature. Notes can just be placed anywhere and don't have to be placed by a registered user. They can be just placed by someone who is reading the data. And then it makes them really, really messy. So in, in here, we look, at, we look at fix me's. Notes is something we, we try to tackle, but it's, it's you know, garbage in, garbage out. So, the hypothesis here was that if we can take this unstructured text corpus and mine the, the content of the, of the language through latent language models, um, we can reveal something that's valuable, right? Uh, and, and the finer you go, the harder it gets, so we stayed at a relatively coarse level. But we would like to, to get to some actionable insights. Um, we would like to understand whether OSM is impacted by similar kind of errors everywhere, or whether there's some regional distribution, um, how that changes and what is common. So the two geographies I'll be talking about today is uh, the US as one of the uh, most mature kind of uh, regions in terms of OSM, and Australia because that's where we live. Uh, we also have divided um, the US into four regions as commonly divided by the census. This is because we did a geographically stratified cross-validation in our model, and I will talk about that a bit later. Okay? So the first thing we've done with the data, we actually removed the effects of some very blatant big bulk imports. We're interested in how users um, relate to the content um, but there were some effects like a whole hydrography for a state imported by someone says, check all these rivers, right? And it was associated with pretty much every single uh, imported feature from that data set. That would completely bias this analysis. So we have removed these things. Well, this is the, the workflow. We are completely uh, FOS4G in, in our team. Uh, you will 
I don't think you will find any commercial software than PowerPoint um, used uh, in, in, in our research. That's because we're interested in pushing out the tools and also collaborating with others and having replicable results. So we've taken the OSM data uh, export, uh, filtered out all of the FixMe uh, tagged features, um, and only did uh, looked at those that were tagged with English. We did an automated language detection uh, with a Python package called uh, LangDetect that can work with short text as well. So that was our corpus. Um, there was all sorts of tokenization that's removing stop words and that sort of stuff uh, in, in language. Uh, we've removed um, um, you know, plurals and that sort of stuff, so lemmatization, removed um, uh, commas and, and diacritic symbols. Uh, and then we did our latent modeling by an algorithm called LLDA, uh, which I will introduce in a moment. We've trained on different data set and validated and tested again uh, a traditional data science workflow that was geographically stratified. That is really important because if you just took your corpus and did a, a random um, n-fold cross-validation, you would not be able to capture the issues with, with geographical bias. And with some analysis, they will try to interpret here. This is the cross-validation for those that don't know what it is. You split your data into some chunks, you use the bulk of the chunks for training a model, and you test it on a chunk that you have not seen before. You do it across, and so you can average the model. Now, a bit dense slide with methodology. LDA, or latent Dirichlet uh, allocation, is quite a common uh, model for uh, building topic models. What you're trying to do is to group documents by the words they use, right? Say it's a, it's a bag of words, and you're trying to say, oh, this bag of words is more similar to that bag of words. Now, that's all very nice, but uh, LDA does not allow you to associate um, the bag with a label that you would have come up with before. So you have to look at the resulting uh, documents that are grouped together and say, ah, I think these are about positional accuracy. That was not great. So we looked at a, whether you can have a semi-supervised LDA approach, um, and we have found LLDA, which allows us to come with a, with a soup of words that we thought will be representative of a specific kind of topic, and say, okay, this is your seed. We will call the words that are mixed here as words that relate to, let's say, positional accuracy, find other documents that relate to this. Okay? So that's how LLDA works, and we have come with four categories of interest to us that I will introduce in a moment um, that will allow to relate the issues that people report, broadly speaking, to the ISO standard categories of, of spatial data quality. Why? Because these are broadly used, and actually we wanted to find out whether that's stuff that matters to people in OSM, or maybe there's something else, right? So the ISO 19157 standard talks about completeness, logical consistency, positional accuracy, and thematic accuracy. We did not look at logical consistency because you can only do it according to standard if you have definitions of features, which we don't have. So we have looked at completeness, uh, positional accuracy, non-quantitative attribute correctness, so all sorts of nominal things, um, and quantitative att uh, attribute accuracy in this piece of work. Yeah. So this is how it looks. This is completeness. Someone says, oh, you should go and map these buildings because they have not been built yet, but they already put uh, points for them. Uh, this is where the data um, are coarsely mapped as points, and someone says you should go and enhance them. So it's a positional accuracy issue. We have uh, uh, non-quantitative attribute correctness. Someone says, oh, this is the wrong street name. Uh, or we say quantitative attribute accuracy, the wrong speed limit has been mentioned. Okay? So broadly, these are the kind of issues we looked at. Uh, this is the, the kind of words you'll see associated with these fixings, right? So, for in Australia, you see location, approximate, verify, position, and so on for position accuracy, while in uh, the US, they, they have pretty much very similar words and so on. So you see these works 
the LLDA has come with very similar kind of terms. The distribution is very different whether you look at the northeast of the US or the more west and southern states. And we are seeing an increase issue with complete completeness, which kind of signalizes that OSM is more mature or complete in the eastern states and northern states. And the further you go west and south, the less complete it is. It's kind of an interesting observation. That might relate also to population density, by the way, right? So more dense population, you have more mappers, possibly. Uh, this is uh, more detail about the outcomes we found. Um, about 73% of all the fixed meat tags can be somehow linked to, to the ISO standard issues. But we also have this category called common topic, and that's the ones that could not have been classified in those four categories. And that's something that we might want to look at in more detail, uh, because it might be that there are issues that OSM mappers are interested in that are not covered by the standard which was developed for traditional mapping approaches. Right? That's an important distinction. Now, what we have also done, we've taken um, notifications of issues in Australia or Victoria for VicMap, where the notification can only be lodged by approved uh, quality assurance people, um, you know, the local governments and so on, and looked at how different the issues in OSM in Victoria are and, and, and in VicMap. And there are some similarities, you know, uh, non-qualitative attribute uh, accuracy is, is, is quite an issue. But in VicMap, uh, completeness is really something that people report a lot. Now, these are proportional issues. It doesn't mean that there is more of it or less in one or the, or the other data set, OK? But an interesting insight. OK. Standardized, the, the standardized process and protocols in VicMap are what drives the difference here, we believe. It's quite clear how people can report things, so it's much easier to mine that data set as opposed to the fixed means, because there is no, no way of, of, <coughs> art, of, of wording your issues that would be guided. Um, the non-qualitative attribute accuracy is dominant in the fixed means in, in Australian OSM, and comes second in VicMap, so it's something people care about a lot. Um, and uh, the quantitative attribute accuracy are minimal across both data sets, and that's mostly because they're not so common. We don't have too many things where, where quantitative attributes occur, such as speed. Okay? All right. Um, some words to conclude, but I think I'm running out of my time. Um, if you want to talk to us more about this, come and grab me. Uh, we'll hear more about the project in a moment, and we also will have a community uh, day on the last day where we'll be looking at trying to actually use some of the tools we've developed to fix OSM. Okay? Thank you. Thank you, Martin. Um, we do have a little bit of time for questions. Is there any questions? So, so is there some guidance on terms you could put in fix me? Is there some guidance? That's the next step. So the reason we've done this piece of work was because uh, Rajesh wanted to find out which issues he should be focusing his machine learning algorithms on. So he has another piece of work he's done on automated imputation of street names. Uh, but there could be also uh, a piece of work on, on guidance of, hey, when you're writing your fix me, please use these sort of keywords that will make it much easier for a tool such as Osmos or, or whichever other, to say, ah, if you're interested in adding attributes, look for these keywords and or you know sp uh, speed limits or some of that. And if you are able to help with measuring things on the ground, because you cannot be an armchair mapper then, you, or you need to be someone possibly on the ground to, to check it, then look for these tags. That would be a really useful recommendation, I believe, but it's not one that we have made yet. Right, so obviously for a complete the map project, you would want to pick out a particular fix me for yeah. a group of people who are able to do fix those things. Exactly, yeah, because currently it is completely, well, you know, uh, unorganized discourse. Yeah. Um, this is how I would characterize it. So I look after uh, the TRO trail, which is a 3,000 kilometer long trail, and someone has helpfully put it into OpenStreetMap. Mm -hmm. But now the trail changes every year, 
and I looked at this about 500 kilometers of changes. It would take me two months to do it on my own. Lovely walk. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> almost quicker to walk it. Yeah. <laughs> so the, my problem is to, to try and tag the changes so that they can be fixed in the group. Yeah, well, that would be probably quite a useful thing. And if, if, if you find a, a schema, let's say, for, for, for how to express what is the problem, maybe it will get adopted across other trail mappers or so. Yeah. But it has to come from, a, from the community. We did not yes. dare to suggest that. I think uh, we don't have the, the, the authority. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Martin. Thank you.